we're going to talk about what 1.1 points, lines, and planes. Just had my uh, nice pumpkin spice coffee, so I'm ready to go. Um, nice thing about fall, you know. Hey, um, when we're dealing with points, lines, and planes, it could be a difficult thing. So uh, just so that we get a few terminology things out of the way, if we were to take a dot, uh, that's how we show it in geometry, that's called, and put a letter next to it, we label that as, say, point A. And really, um, a point has no dimension, but in geometry, we show it with a dot. So if we were to take two dots or two points and put them together and draw a line through it, say like A and B, and then we have our line through it, we call that line, oops, let's fix that up real quick. There we go. Okay, we call that line AB. Okay, and we could also go the other way. We could say line BA. And so, uh, as long as we think, hey, the the this goes through those two points, goes on forever. That's what the arrows mean. Now, if we just want to show between those two points, that's actually called a segment. So, and we actually label that as segment AB or segment BA. Okay, if we were to put a third point on that line. Those are now called um, collinear points. So we could say A, B, and C are collinear. Co meaning together. Linear meaning the line, together on the line. A, B, and C are collinear. So you don't usually, you're not going to use three points to name the line. So what you could actually do from that is you could say, well, um, I'm now going to call this A, C. Goes from here through here, and it continues on through those two points. Or you can even use BC. So any two points on that line would work. Okay. Uh, now notice that still segment only goes from here to here, so the C would have nothing to do with that because we're just talking about that chunk right there. All right. So now, if you think of three points that are collinear. Um, Really, it makes it tough. Like if I was to try to lay a piece of plywood over those points, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, really hold it too well. Um, so if I take those points and I say, well, I have A and I have B, and then I take C and maybe put it down here, like in a triangular shape, three points that are non-collinear, so they kind of make a triangle if you if you connect them there. Three non-collinear points form what's called a plane. Now generally we won't show that in a in triangle. We actually show it we actually show it in a um, using a parallelogram. Okay? So three non-collinear points make a plane. Now think if they were collinear, that's almost like having a door. Uh, you know, think of a door. A door has three hinges usually. And so those are points are collinear, and that door swings. So really, it doesn't actually stop in one spot until it hits a fourth point, like the latch, and that slams the door and it locks it in place. Okay, then that becomes a defined plane. Well, that's kind of how um, uh, three points on a plane work. Those three points, these two, make a line, and then that that third one out here is kind of like the latch. It's like having almost like having two hinges and then your third point out here. So if we were to say move um, point A and point B, we're going to move those, we're going to put them out here. And remember, well maybe you don't remember, but planes move on in all directions forever. So um, point A and point B will say right there, and then point C could be our latch, say right there. Okay, so um, that allows us then to think of that as, well, I hinge here, and then it locks it in place right there. That defines a plane. Um, if I put point C here, it would just swing openly, and we wouldn't be able to define a plane. So really what you need to do is take away that three non-collinear points, any three non-collinear points form a plane. And we name that plane using those three points. So we would call this plane A, B, C. And 
you can put those points in any order. So you call it BAC or CBA. Okay? So a few definitions there. All right. Oh, and one last thing on that. These points are called, they're meant to be called coplanar. Okay? Since they lie on the same plane, you could say A, B, and C are coplanar. I'll probably review that a little later, but that means together on a plane. Okay, so let's talk about some of these intersections. So if you think back to if you think back to uh, algebra, uh, when two lines intersect, two lines always intersect at a point. So let's say we labeled this line AB because we're creative like that. We label this line. XY, because we're creative like that, the intersection of AB, the intersection of AB, line AB, and line XY are at this point right here in the middle. And let's go ahead and label that P. Not R. It is. is point P. Okay, so two lines intersect at a point. Whereas if we think of a line and a plane, think of your plane, let's uh, say like it's a piece of paper. So if you were to hold up a piece of paper, and we'll just, another way of labeling a plane is with the letter, a letter in the corner, like plane P. If you don't see a point next to it, it means it's a plane. Okay, so this is plane P. So the intersection of plane P or a piece of paper, and then let's take your pencil. I'm going to take this. Going to this line is going to represent my pencil, and I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to hit the paper right there. When I slam it into the paper, it's going to um, uh, break through that paper, and it's going to come out the other end. And you'll notice I start using a little dotted line to show it's coming out the other on the other side until I'm to a point where I can see the line again. So that's a way of showing that this is a hidden line. Okay, so my pencil, and we'll call that my pencil line L. Okay, and so line L, that's another way of naming a line. So line L intersects plane P. at point, I'm going to abbreviate point, and we'll call this point M. Okay, so a plane and a line intersect at a point. That's one way. Okay, a plane and a line could also intersect in another way. So let's say um, I had a line L there. Let's say I take another line. In this case, um, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and draw a plane. Okay, so here's going to be my plane. It's just going to be a parallelogram. Okay, yeah, not a great parallel looking parallelogram, so don't be jealous there, but we're going to call this plane uh, J. Okay, plane J, and we're going to say plane J is like my desktop. And one thing that I can do on my desktop is the teacher is talking and say, hey, put your pencils down. So this time I'm just going to lay my pencil on the desktop. Okay. And I'm going to make my pencil a line there. And we're going to call this um, pencil, we're going to call it line N. So the intersection this time of plane J, or plane, plane, J, plane J and line N is actually where the pencil hits the desk, which is in all places. So another, another way to have an intersection of a plane and a line is not just a point, but a plane and a line can intersect at a line. So the intersection of plane N or plane J and line N is line N. So another thing we could think of the intersection of plane J and line N is line N. 
Okay, so we have three different things. We have the intersection of two lines at a point. We have the intersection of a plane and a line at a point. And we have the intersection of a plane and a line at a plane. Okay? The other thing we need to have is the intersection of two planes. And I'm kind of out of room here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this. And actually, um, let's see, erase all. There we go. Okay, and we're going to show the intersection of two planes. So if you think of two planes like a piece of paper, let's say this is a piece of paper, and I want to take and make it like a three-dimensional plus sign because I'm a math geek like that. All right, so I'm going to make a parallelogram here. Uh, go ahead and draw it down and draw down to here. And notice how one of my pieces of paper is now intersecting the other piece of paper. It sits right on top, and then I'm going to have this plane continue right below it. Okay until I get to there, and it's going to continue right below it as well. All right, so there's my three-dimensional plus sign. I'll do some uh, quick edit work here, but okay. All right, so what that is showing is where uh, two planes intersect. They intersect at a line, and probably the easiest way to see this, like in, like wherever you're sitting right now, is to look at uh, two walls, where two walls intersect. That's in the corner of the wall. Well, that corner is a line. Okay, that would be the corner. Okay, and so let's say we put some points on this. We'll call this point A and point B. Okay, and since planes go on forever, this is a line that would go on forever. So we call this plane X and plane Y. We could say plane X and plane Y intersect at line AB. So two planes intersect at a line. All right, and that's one way to show, but the easiest way is just to look at the where all your walls come together in your in your room there or in your house there. Okay. Next one is coplanar, and I, I think we talked about that. Coplanar just means together on a plane. So remember, in in order to be coplanar, you'd have to have three points. They'd be together on a plane, so A, B, and C. So we've already talked about that. I don't want to belabor that. That's a pretty easy concept. But I do want to go on the next thing, and it's just rays and opposite rays. Let's say you think of the sun. The sun is a point way up in the sky. And from that sun, um, it shines rays down on us. Okay, there's a ray there's a ray, there's a ray, there's a ray, and the rays go in all different directions, right? Okay, so when we start at a point and continue in another direction, we're going to call this B, it's going to be ray A, or point A. Put a point C, D, E, and F. So this, one, this is called a ray, and when you start at a single point, and move in one direction forever. If I take ray AB out of that, that is called a ray. And we label that as just like that with that symbol above it. And that symbol always points in that direction. So if I'm like labeling ray AF, and we know we we look at it and we go, oh, there's A, and it goes that way, and there's F, we still started at point A, so you have to put that first, and you put your arrow going that way when you're labeling it. So that would be ray AF. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay? And then, um, you. by the way, you cannot switch these and call this FA. You have to always have the point you're starting with first. And the last thing are called opposite rays. So if I have a ray going this one way, saying A, say AB, and then I have another one moving this way, and we'll put the F here. So we say that since they both start at A, ray AF is opposite 
ray a b okay these guys are opposite rays and actually those opposite rays form a line so it kind of takes us full circle there all right that's it points lines and planes pretty cool stuff